Welcome to Salisbury University On The Air, a program highlighting the activities and the people of the campus. I'm your host, Susan Purnell. When we speak about college students, your mind probably brings up the image of 18 to 22 year old students, some fresh out of high school, looking to further their education. While that makes up a large portion of students at SU, there also are many university graduates seeking an advanced degree. In fact, SU's graduate and doctoral programs include nearly a thousand students. Here to discuss the award-winning graduate programs at SU is Dr. Clifton Griffin, Dean of Graduate Studies and Research. Welcome, Clifton. So good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you very much. I guess we, we think we might have met before, but absolutely. You know, but for you me, know, it's like Groundhog Day. Right. <laughs> Every day. Anything pre-COVID, I'm not really sure what happened. Absolutely, I'm right. with you on that. Right. Now, I just mentioned that you have nearly a thousand students in the graduate programs. Right. Tell me a little bit about them. Sure. So that is a great number. Uh, last fall, our actual number was 972 students among 15 master's programs, two doctoral programs. Three of those master's programs are offered online. Uh, if you look at the Master of Social Work program, it's offered in a variety of locations all around Maryland uh, through a DOD contract we have uh, with the University of Maryland University uh, Global Campus, uh, uh, offering that degree overseas in Europe. And then, as I say, our uh, Master's of GIS Management, that social work degree that I mentioned, and our online MBA program are all online. And so we probably have right now, uh, if you mix all of those together, 150 to 165, I forget exactly uh, how many uh, students online. And the rest of uh, the folks are in your traditional based program. Mm -hmm. Of course, this, this current academic year, nothing's traditional. Right. Majority of our offerings are you know, being done in a hybrid or you know, online you know, format uh, during the, you know, you know, this, this time, but that's not the norm. Normally, we have a great deal of interaction with students face-to-face -face, uh, in the mm -hmm. master's programs and doctoral programs. Um, so we did have an, a growth in graduate enrollment last fall which was pretty amazing considering, once again, these turbulent times. But uh, also when people are, you know, in the midst of trying to figure out what do I do with life or that maybe there's troubling or folks mm -hmm. have lost jobs and they need to invest in themselves more. Uh, so we saw growth in, of course, those online programs, mm -hmm. but we also saw growth in some of our traditional programs. The English master's degree grew, history's master's degree grew, um, uh, math education grew. GIS program grew, so we had growth across the board. You know, I hadn't thought about that, but I guess people really are sitting home going, hey, I got all this time on my hands, I might as well get more right. educated in well, my field. Well, uh, you know, whether you consider it kind of fortunately or unfortunately, you know, traditionally in graduate education, if there's an economic downturn, you tend to see an increase in graduate education, and that's been true for decades. Mm. Because once again, if people are needing to get retooled because they need to change jobs, or if they need an additional cred uh, credential to try to advance in their profession, mm -hmm. then graduate education and investing in yourself is a great a great bang for the buck, it certainly uh, so is. to speak. So yes. yeah, absolutely. So I, I know the coursework is exemplary, but. Let's talk a little bit about the hands-on opportunities that are right. provided to some of these students uh, in, in terms of internships. Sure, sure. So just like we have a great uh, uh, profile uh, at the undergraduate level where students are heavily engaged outside the classroom, same thing holds true at the graduate level. So for example, some programs, your traditional, everyone knows about education, the Masters of Social Work, you know, other professional oriented degrees, professional meaning that they have a certain accrediting body that they have to meet certain standards. So, of course, uh, most of the folks that are in our education program are working teachers, so they're working on the job. Masters of Social Work, they must have a rigorous clinical aspect to their advanced mm -hmm. master's level training in the uh, social work area. Doctor of Nursing Practice, oftentimes these are working professional nurses 
that are, you know, working in their field, and that's the experience that they're bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. The MBA program does a great deal of work. Uh, you know, with local businesses uh, on projects and kind of capstone project experience. Mm -hmm. The GIS master's program, uh, if folks are working in the field, of course, they're getting the hands-on experience from their job. But if not, then learning how to be a manager in that very technical-oriented field is kind of our bread and butter for mm -hmm. that degree program. And then if you take things like history, we have a tremendous resource. The NAB Research Center, you know, right here in our academic commons, is a phenomenal uh, opportunity for students to be engaged and do hands-on research about an incredibly unique part mm -hmm. of our country. Um, and so other programs, whether it's say English, students are often teaching assistants, so they're working in the classroom, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, of course, our EDD students are, you know, out in the field as well. So it just, it really depends on which program they're in, mm -hmm. what standards they need to meet, and so forth. You said research. I know that that is sort of a hallmark of graduate right. work. Can you give us an example of some of the projects that some of the students are involved sure, in? Sure, sure. So uh, one thing about the idea of research overall at Salisbury University uh, is that the majority of the research, whether it's funded from an external source like you know, a national federal agency uh, or through a state agency and so forth, a great deal of what we do at SU is connected to the community. So it might be working with, so for example, we have uh, a great project uh, where we have some folks in education and community health and other areas that are working with, you know, local migrant farmer families mm -hmm. to, you know, help educate them and help bridge the gap and make sure they have the resources that they need to try to advance in society and so forth. So that is not something you normally think of as a grant or research, but it's critically important. Sure. I mentioned uh, the DMP program earlier. Well, of course. I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. Doctor of Nursing Practice. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that, mm -hmm. sorry about that. No, doctor of Nursing Practice. Our nurses are working in critical areas all over Delmarva uh, uh, in their line of work and their research or kind of their capstone experience for that degree is usually linked specifically to where they work. And, and so it could be a variety of different aspects of research. But we also have folks that are working on research that's funded through the National Science Foundation. And we have grad students that are working on field experiences, uh, studying different kinds of frogs in Panama. Uh, we have uh, folks <laughs> that are you know, out in the field in the tr more traditional sense of really going out in the field. Uh, uh, and doing that kind of research as well. So it really depends on the nature of the degree program, uh, exactly what aspect they may be involved with. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and a lot of our research, like I said, is very connected to a certain aspect of the community. It might be part of the recovery from the opioid crisis. We have you know major projects going on there. Mm -hmm. It might have grad students and undergraduates working there. So it really depends. Okay. I, so the results of this research. Right. Where is it displayed? Where, where could I go to find okay, some so, of the research so, projects? So primarily, if you're a grad student mm -hmm. or, or, or even an undergrad, but faculty and grad students, the displaying of their research is really about presenting that within mm -hmm. their professional field. Okay. So for example, if, you, if you're in uh, the Applied Biology Master's program and you've done research uh, on white marlin, you might be presenting that research within a conference in your field. And uh -huh. so it's very much kind of part of that academic, you mm -hmm. know, we go to the nerd conferences, we are all, we love being nerds and we all celebrate together in the greatest sense of that word, of course. But then on campus, uh, we try to have opportunities that can be more public through things like, uh, we publish a research magazine uh, annually, we're working on our 11th edition right now, putting mm -hmm. the finishing touches on that. I so have that's, seen that. So that publication is one where we really try to push out to the community writ large uh, to display research in all its phases at SU. Faculty, mm -hmm. students, grad students, undergraduates, every kind of project imaginable. And like I said, we're working on our 11th edition of this magazine. So, so that is quite an accomplishment if you think of mm -hmm. probably a couple of hundred projects that have been highlighted over the last about to be 11 years. Um, uh, so a lot of ways you can find out about research and, mm -hmm. and, and learn more details. 
Now, two of the graduate programs have recently received some mm -hmm. accolades right. with regard to being best in the nation yep. in an online setting. Yep. Can you tell me about those? Sure, 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 absolutely. Online MBA program, uh, Master's in Nursing, both great programs have uh, received, as I said, you know, national accolades relative to, I mean, what makes one get accolades? Well, first, quality. So you've got to have faculty that are of the highest standard and they have to be in a setting that is, you know, accredited by the organ national organizations. All of those things happen. But it has to be a meaningful experience, of course, for the students. Mm -hmm. And they have to be able to get that degree or accomplish, you know, everything needed to complete that degree in an effective and efficient manner. So you want to be able to get in, get that degree program, have that holistic experience, and, and do it in a cost-effective manner, just like we were talking about mm -hmm. you know, earlier. Right. So both of those degree programs have been recognized by their peers at being high quality and very effective at you know, helping students meet their individual academic and professional goals. And being online, they can sure. do this sure. and still work. Uh, oftentimes, that's absolutely yeah. the case, yes. Now, graduate assistantships are okay. also available for some graduate students. Uh, how do you go about getting one? And right. um, I guess it helps defray it? some of the costs. <laughs> right, yeah. absolutely. So at any given time, like, like I said, we have, let's say we have 950 to 1,000 grad students. At any given point, we have about 100, it might be up to 120 graduate assistantships, which are really just an employment-based, still students first uh, title whereby a grad assistant can serve a variety of roles on campus. The students part of the obligation is they're going to work 20 hours a week towards mm -hmm. this assistantship. They will get paid at some rate and the rates do vary. You know, uh, mm -hmm. some, some students get paid at a, uh, at a certain rate. Some students might earn a little bit more as a, you know, in a different department but they might be contributing in several different ways. We have many teaching assistantships. Mm -hmm. So for example, we probably couldn't offer all of our English, uh, uh, you know, especially uh, freshman and sophomore level English courses if we didn't have TAs, teaching assistants. Mm -hmm. So students are often recruited into that master's program and given an opportunity to get one of those as teaching assistantships mm -hmm. at the same time. So sometimes they get the degree, I mean, the, the assistantship as part of the recruiting process. Um, others, it is much more open. So let's say there is uh, um, uh, an assistantship that's available in the Center for Student Achievement. Uh, and they really just need a person at the graduate level that can help work in that uh, location. Mm -hmm. Well, they will work with our office and they'll publicize it. Uh, 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 online uh, where students can see and grad students mm -hmm. can see and our office will help push those job descriptions out to the entire graduate student community and they may have a very open search process. Mm -hmm. uh, graduate assistants are serving as teaching assistants throughout athletics. So every time you see an assistant coach or uh, maybe it's an assistant uh, strength and conditioning coach or some aspect of our great athletics program, we probably have, a, I don't know, 15 or 20 graduate assistants working in athletics at any given time. Uh, so they serve an incredibly vital role uh, on the teaching side. Also lots of research, all these projects we talked mm -hmm. about earlier, or it could be research within a department. You know, the NAB Research Center mm -hmm. has a couple of graduate assistants that are always, you know, available, you know, there. So it it, it varies. It, it's, uh, those positions are linked to the department needs. Uh, it's it's uh, something where they can get experience teaching and or contributing to research. Plus uh, it helps pay for their Plus it tuition. helps pay for the, the, pay the bills. Right. Because everyone on a graduate assistantship does get a tuition waiver whereby they don't pay the tuition portion oh. of their education. Now that's part of the package that the department oh, pays. Great. So they get paid an amount of money and then their tuition is covered as well. So students in the graduate programs, as we said, are not just coming right out of their bachelors. They're right. oftentimes coming from work environments. We have a variety of uh, uh, you know, uh, students. If you looked at our student body, it's correct uh, at the graduate level that at any given time, 
there are probably 60, 65% of our grad program are working professionals. So oh, that's a large percentage. It is, absolutely. Yeah. So the majority of people that are pursuing a master's degree or, or doctoral degree in education, for example, are working teachers or assistant principal or some other administrator. Uh, certainly masters of social work, most of those uh, folks are working full-time social workers mm -hmm. and they're pursuing an, an additional credential. Sure, within even those two examples, there's a small subset of students that are traditional based. I graduated from college, uh, I, you know, in some degree program, and I went directly into my master's program, straight shot. Sure, mm -hmm. we have lots of uh, examples of students that are in that traditional mindset, but we have a good mix of what's considered non-traditional. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about that mindset, especially if you think about it the last couple of years, what is traditional? What's great about SU is... <laughs> I can't answer that this year. <laughs> there's, no, there's no traditional, there's no normal. And I think, you know, you know, the opportunity that you can get at a place like SU in the graduate world is every graduate program uh, will do whatever they can to be as flexible as they can to meet students where they are. Now that may physically mean through the offering in an online environment. Mm -hmm. It may mean through an opportunity to, you know, for students that might not absolutely meet the minimum credentials. How can we help you get to a point where mm -hmm. you can enter and be successful? Uh, so meet you where you are in your life, in your career. Lots of folks that are working with two kids and families and mortgages and things like that mm -hmm. as part of the consideration. Uh, how can we help you be effective and be successful, you know, in, in that graduate program? And sure, you see it at other places, and, and I've worked at large Research One schools, and sure, but I'm really proud of the fact that if you come to Salisbury University for a graduate degree, you're going to meet grad program directors and faculty that are going to be willing to, you know, train you in an excellent manner and meet you where you are to help you be successful. And, and that's something to, to really be proud of. That is, that is. Now, graduate students comprise a minority of the total population, sure. student population, sure. but they also have a voice and they have a government, yep. a, a yep. student council, right. is that what it's called? Yeah, so the Graduate Student Council, we, 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 it, it had some origins back historically, but, but it wasn't very active uh, you know, whenever I, I got here to SU in 2010, um, and so worked with some, some motivated students at that time. Uh, as a matter of fact, the first Graduate Student Council president is currently our interim mayor, Julia Glanz, by the way. Oh, little, wow. Little shout out for Julia. She helped form that organization or reform it back uh, uh, during her time as a master's uh -huh. student at SU. Um, and so uh, Grad Student Council works uh, very uh, collectively with the Student Government Association. So sure, you have a student body president. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're, 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 we've been really fortunate, and certainly fortunate now, to have two great student leaders. You know, David McCreary is a uh, you know, the uh, it's not really undergraduate. He's the student body president, mm -hmm. student government president. And then, of course, uh, Casey Kazar, who is our current graduate student council president, pursuing her master's degree in history. So here's a great example. She is a student leader. She's pursuing her master's degree in history. She's great at that. She works for PACE, which is the outreach component, community engagement uh, center for the campus. So mm -hmm. she's heavily involved in community nonprofits, et cetera, et cetera, as a graduate assistant. So you see, those kind of things can happen right. all over campus. You can be a student leader, you can have an advocacy group like the Graduate Student Council where you can be a, learn more about mm -hmm. that kind of higher level student uh, advocacy component of, of, of the time that you're at working as a grad student, mm -hmm. um, and you can get paid. You know? and, and it teaches leaders to continue Absolutely. to be leaders. Absolutely. That's, that's great. Absolutely. Are there certain base admissions standards to get into the graduate programs? Well, every grad program, so our office, Dean of Grad Studies, Office of Graduate Studies, is all about uh, uh, helping students navigate through the admissions process. We, we you know, work on the application, et cetera, et cetera. But the absolute standards by which a student has to meet to be admitted is really controlled by the graduate uh, programs themselves. It, you know, in association mm -hmm. with our office, of course. So there are so minimal. each one is different. It's somewhat different, mm -hmm. but there are minimum standards. So, for example, you know, for the most part, you have to have 
had a four-year degree or a baccalaureate degree, uh, have uh, about a 3.0 minimum standards, and some programs do require a standardized test, the graduate record exam, the dreaded GRE, or, uh, you know, the MBA program, uh, you, know, my, you know, has certain standardized tests that you have to take and There's meet a test some minimum standards. There are. So mm -hmm. it really depends. So the most important thing a person can do, whether they're interested in a grad program at Salisbury University or anywhere else, is go to that program's website, look at the admission standards there. If it's primarily going to be things like a 3.0, graduated with a baccalaureate degree, does it have to be a degree in a certain field or could it be a variety of undergraduate degrees that would meet the need? And is there any standardized test associated with you know, that admission standard? Mm -hmm. So it really depends. Uh, so we have some, we try to maintain a level of, you know, excellence as far as the expectation, but we also try to allow students uh, some flexibility. And like I said earlier, there, there's opportunities to be flexible. So does it have to be in your field? You might need to take a course or two that are considered undergraduate courses mm -hmm. to help with some degree of leveling. Because so the, you know, what we want is for you to enter the MBA program and to be successful mm -hmm. or enter whatever program and be successful. Uh, but certainly there are opportunities for you to take a course or two that might be somewhat prerequisite-like mm -hmm. or somewhat of a leveling mentality-like uh, to allow you to get that basic understanding so that when you enter the master's level curriculum, you're, you're ready to be successful. Mm -hmm. Now, other programs are a little more holistic, uh, whereby you might have a degree from a variety of perspectives, for example, and you want to pursue, let's say, a master's degree in conflict analysis and dispute resolution. Let's say you've had this same career that you've just described and you said, you know, I've just always been interested in things like, you know, peace studies and conflict analysis and, uh, you know, community justice and things like that. Can I pursue a master's degree in that field? Sure. And you might not need to take any additional course to enter in that master's degree. It doesn't mean that that degree is not as rigorous or not as effective. It just simply means you can pick up uh, uh, the nature of that coursework as you're as taking. As you're learning. Yeah, abso mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it really, Interesting. it really does depend. It depends on, okay. on the background. There's a variety of offerings, for example, to pursue a, a master's of social work. Lots of people pursue a master's of social work that don't have a bachelor's degree in social work. But just like your example, they pursue it in a manner whereby they get that leveling experience mm -hmm. along the mm -hmm. way and they're able to be successful you know, as well. So it really depends. Once again, we're all about meeting you where you are and mm -hmm. helping you be successful. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. So we talked mostly about the master's programs, but there's always the doctoral sure. programs as well. Yep, Tell absolutely. Tell me a little bit about them. So two doctoral programs. Uh, one uh, was well on its way to being established, as I said, when I got here in 2010 started offering that degree program in 2012, and that's the Doctor of Nursing Practice. Right. So lots of folks who are pursuing, uh, let's say, a nurse practitioner-like uh, opportunity out in the field, uh, um, you know, and, and they want to work as a, a nurse practitioner independently. Uh, that might be that they're, you know, working in a private practice. They could mm -hmm. be working in a hospital setting. They could be working in... Uh, um, uh, elder care, so lots of nursing home, you know, uh, facilities have as the primary caregiver uh, a, a nurse practitioner. So you can pursue the doctor of nursing practice at SU and that credential is now considered kind of the national standard for folks that are in the nurse practitioner world. The other degree program that we started offering a couple of years later is in education. So Doctor of Education in mm -hmm. Literacy. I'll save you from the long, long title. Um, so once again, a critical need uh, to have doctorally trained folks in education. Uh, we, we have this connection in literacy at our campus because we have a master's of reading specialist oriented program. Mm -hmm. Lots of people that are working throughout uh, once again, the education community that are reading specialists or that are interested in literacy, but they also could be folks that are working as an assistant principal or as you fill in the blank, whatever administrator, mm -hmm. but their background might have been associated with literacy or some aspect of that, that degree program. 
And so they pursue the doctoral degree. And then we have folks that are coming to pursue a doctor of education in that literacy program that, that want to go on and continue to do research in the field. So once again, here's an example. Uh, I can be pursuing my doctor of education in this literacy oriented mm -hmm. uh, uh, doctoral program, be a working uh, reading specialist teacher at Del Mar Elementary or wherever, mm -hmm. as an example, and my research might be connected to some challenge that I've seen in the classroom, some experience that, mm -hmm. that, that students or kids are having in my particular school, and how can I do research to help figure out ways to improve that outcome, improve their outcome. So very connected to my pursuing a doctoral degree mm -hmm. is helping students in my school where I work as a teacher. So lots of interaction there for yeah. those two doctoral programs. Lots of win-wins for I, the students, I, for the teachers, for the, the, the person herself or himself that is right. bettering themselves by getting a doctor. I mean, that's pretty yeah. impressive. Yes, ma'am. So with COVID-19, how can a prospective graduate school student um, come to the campus and look around? Well, just like any other student. So, uh, so we have started, admissions folks at Salisbury mm -hmm. University even, have, you know, have started back the last couple of months uh, hosting students for tours, even mm -hmm. if they're interested in being a new freshman. Uh, it is possible to come on campus and to see the campus uh, and to visit different parts of the campus and so forth in very controlled, safe manners, wearing masks, masks socially distanced, right. all of the things. But if you were interested particularly in a graduate program, uh, the thing that I would say is what I keep coming back to. The best thing you can do is contact via the website the grad program director for that individual graduate program mm -hmm and see if they are on campus at a particular time or is there an opportunity to visit the campus mm -hmm. or to have a conversation, uh, you know, in person, you know, things like that. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, if a person picked up the phone and said, I'm interested in having a tour of campus, I'm considering coming there uh, for a master's degree, and they happen to call our admissions folks, I'm pretty sure they would work with them mm -hmm. to make that happen. Uh, if they contact the grad program director, they might say, you know, hey, I can have conversations with you about the program itself and we can help set you up with admissions or the Office of Graduate Studies. We're certainly glad to help bridge that gap mm -hmm. uh, uh, if someone wanted to do a walking tour campus or whatever. So, you know, it's the same kind of way you would any other time, except now there's just, uh, you know, you got to be very, very, very careful. We got to socially distance. We got to wear our mask. We got to take care of each other. You said something earlier, which I was very surprised about, and that's that it, the, the graduate uh, programs are not just offered here on campus, but in a lot of other places. Like you mentioned Europe. Right. So the Masters of Social Work degree program, mm -hmm. um, uh, for example, is offered in partnership with the University of Maryland Global Campus um, as part of a Department of Defense contract offering that both baccalaureate, so this mm -hmm. is an example where they offer the bachelor's degree and the master's degree uh, um, at locations in Germany for people that are in the military or military mm -hmm. associated. Mm -hmm. uh, and then oftentimes, because military folks don't stay still, a, a person might start, so I might be the, the husband of someone that's in the military and I'm pursuing my master's of social work, all of a sudden my spouse uh, gets you know, relocated within a year, what do I do? Well, you might start in person in a setting, say, in Europe mm -hmm. uh, or in that program, uh, and then you might transition and finish up your degree online through the MSW online program. We also offer the program, you know, traditionally based uh, in multiple locations in Maryland. So in Hagerstown, Cecil College, mm -hmm. uh, Southern Maryland, for example. How did that happen? Well, the state, in concert with the University System of Maryland, identified those areas of Maryland of being in critical need of additional highly trained mm -hmm. social workers. Social work is probably one of the fastest growing fields in the country. 
Now, that's both a wonderful thing to say and uh, speaks pretty highly about our society. We have a lot of needs. We have a lot of needs. Um, I, I don't see a time when we're going to need less social workers trained mm -hmm. at a high level to help meet society challenges because mm -hmm. it doesn't appear we're running out of any society challenges <laughs> anytime soon. So, That's very true. Do you think there'll be an expansion of the offerings of the graduate programs here at SU? It's all about a balancing act. It really is. Um, you know, we are, Salisbury University is a traditional uh, regional comprehensive school in the academic speak, what does that mean? Well, it means that we're really good at undergraduate education. We're about being a resident-based campus where students mm -hmm. come here, they have an experience, they live on campus, or they live close to campus. But more and more, this idea of comprehensive being more open to some online offerings, more open to graduate offerings, and the fact that we have two doctoral programs. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that I had an email exchange today with a faculty member that's working on uh, a proposed uh, new master's degree in a department that has no graduate program. And they are interested in growing into offering a master's degree in this field. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say them out loud because I don't want to get anybody. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> but, but, but in other words, that, that, the, the idea is still there. Yeah. Faculty uh, uh, want to be able to expand as appropriate uh, oftentimes uh, into offering master's level you know, degree programs. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when it's at its best. Uh, when a graduate program happens at the grassroots level where faculty really want to consider it within their department, that, that's when it's at its best. Mm -hmm. So the answer is the typical administrator answer, which is we are certainly open to growth if it makes sense. And, and that that's answer the way it makes is. sense uh, to you know? me. Let's talk about you. Oh, Let's okay. Let's talk about what you feel is the value of your own graduate and doctoral experience. Wow. Um, well, I certainly wouldn't be sitting here, uh, you know, absolutely. Uh, so... Um, you know, it's a spark, I think, that happens to some folks, and it definitely happened to me. Uh, I'm a non-traditional student. Uh, 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 it took me 10 years to get an undergraduate degree. Uh, changed my major multiple really? times. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I spent about three and a half, four years working roofing and construction in the Mississippi Delta in the heat. And you learned that maybe I should go back to school and not be... Uh, and maybe I should actually go to school and go to class. Mm -hmm. So it's not the traditional based, but when I went back to school and uh, got that uh, uh, spark that I want to continue to pursue things at the graduate level, I really thought I was going to go traditional based, you know, go be a faculty member. I ended up being fortunate enough to uh, get in the doctoral program at Texas A&M University, uh, stayed there uh, and worked uh, started right after my uh, doctoral degree working in administration. Uh, so I kind of had a, uh, an abnormal uh, career path. But, you know, uh, I'm happy where I am today, uh, uh, being, you know, 55 with, you know, great kids and we're healthy and life is good. But I tell folks, and I really mean this, um, my time as a doctoral student was the most incredible time of my life. Huh because of the opportunity. There's nothing like expanding your mind. When you get to work on a variety of projects and you're, you're teaching classes, I don't think uh, intellectually a person can grow more than you do during that doctoral experience. You'll be tested to the max. There'll be times that you will cry. There'll be times that you'll be elated. There's nothing like passing your comprehensive exams your preliminary exams, it's really tough. And one of the best things that anyone ever told me is, uh, if you're pursuing a master's degree, it's because you're becoming a master of something. If you're pursuing a doctoral degree, it's supposed to be the hardest intellectual thing you've ever done in your life because not many people do it. That's true. And so if you do, you have to be prepared to have a little as my dad used to say, intestinal fortitude to get it done. Uh -huh. So it's critically important. So I wouldn't be here without it. So I love the challenges. Good and I, and uh, uh, I love that I was given a second chance and I love being able to help 
other folks get a second chance. And you can probably relate to those who are struggling through oh, their undergraduate totally, work. Totally, totally. That's great. Totally. Um, so just one last question, and that's if someone out there listening to us today says, you know, I think I might want to get that graduate education, where do they go? Where do they start? If they were interested in a field at Salisbury University, yes. uh, if you go to the website, uh, Salisbury University, the very first thing you're going to see up the top is academics. You click on that button, grad studies is going to come down. If you click on graduate studies, it'll take you directly to all of the graduate programs we have mm -hmm. uh, at Salisbury University and any individual program that you're interested in pursuing. You stop on that particular program. Uh, it will tell you everything you need to know about what is the nature of that degree, what mm -hmm. can you do with that degree, why should you pursue that degree, and everything about the admission standards that we mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. all of those kind of things. So very easy right. to get to from the main Does page. Does sound easy. Thank you so much for your Thank time you, today. Susan. Very informative. I Thank am, you. I'm sure we all learned a lot. Well, great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. We've heard about the benefits of student research. Let's take a look at one of these projects in action. This summer, Dr. Price and I have created a website where people can go on and learn more about different endangered, rare, and threatened species in Maryland and hopefully find new ways to help them as far as planting different plants in your garden. Um, we have an iNaturalist page linked where you can actually go out and take a picture of a certain species, butterfly, moth, bee, just any species, there's no limits on that. And you can actually upload it and have a professional identify it, which will help us to increase the data on where these particular species are being found in Maryland, which all plays into part of adding more and more data to help us and the Maryland Department of Natural Resources, because a big thing they do is keep track of all the species in Maryland and figure out what's what's going to need our help soon, what's threatened, what species are vulnerable, and what we need to do in order to help fluff up their habitat and make them flourish. I think people know um, just a little bit of information about all those bad insects out there and all the good insects go overlooked. Um, in particular, the pollinators. So the pollinators are of concern. Um, we need flowers, we need crops, we need all these things. Uh, so it's really important you know, to save and preserve our pollinators. Well, one thing I really found fascinating was a lot of people don't know that uh, bees aren't the only pollinators. So a lot of people don't even know butterflies are pollinators. So I'm excited to spread more awareness on that aspect, as well as just provide more information out there for Maryland specific species that need help. When one species is struggling, the whole world knows about it, which is really good. And like all the United States will know about like a particular species that needs help, but sometimes you gotta bring it local and think about what you can do to really help where you are. And just like helping your local species will eventually help globally as well. I think people think very globally rather than locally when it would be very beneficial to know which species in our state that we need to help out. We've heard employers say time and time again that students with an SU education, both graduate and undergraduate, are able to hit the ground running and often are among the top performers in their fields. If any of our viewers are considering graduate school or know someone who is, taking a look at SU's graduate programs is a wonderful place to start. More and more events are taking place at SU, and while they are still being held in a virtual format, there is much to be gained from these outstanding programs. Let's take a look at what's happening in March.
It's incredible to see all of the amazing events hosted by SU this semester. I hope you will take the time to enjoy some of them from the comfort of your own home. I'd like to thank my guest, Dr. Clifton Griffin, Dean of Graduate Studies and Research at SU. I'm Susan Purnell, and this has been Salisbury University On the Air. Thank you for watching.